hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Beardo Cleaver. It's time for another fucking show review. Uh, just came back from a show from a, a group called V&V Nation. Uh, they're officially a two-piece from, I think, Ireland originally, but now they're based in Germany. And I say officially two members, like the, the vocalist, I think his name is Ronin. I want to say and then I think the other official member is the drummer but at this show they had two additional members uh, both I guess keyboard players or synthesizer players or like samplers or whatever on either side of the stage so it was very symmetrical it was awesome to see uh, it was like the singer and then behind him was the drummer of course and I've got a few, th a few things to say about the drummer too uh, and then on either side of them Synth player one and synth player two. Yeah, it was. Uh, I don't. I don't usually go to a lot of. Uh, like electronic or, EDM or, stuff like that type of shows. Actually, the the closest. That I've gone to like an industrial or electronic or whatever, type of show would be Ramstein back in two thousand twelve. But uh, I go to a lot of like metal and punk shows, so this would be the first time. This is the closest thing I've been to, like, a rave or anything like that. And uh, I was pleasantly surprised. I had a really good time. Um, I work at a record store. And the owner is a really cool dude. His favorite band is V&V &V Nation. And he was saying that uh, you can't miss the show. You have to go. So I, I trust this guy's musical taste, of course. So I thought, well, what the hell? Might as well go. Nothing, nothing to lose, right? So I went. Didn't expect. I I thought that the band would have at least a guitarist or something, or like a bass player or something. But no, it was just like I said, the singer, two synth players, and a drummer. <laughs> and it was it was cool watching the drummer because he didn't have a traditional kit. He had like an electronic drum kit, and he wasn't even sitting down at that. He was he was standing up, and not playing the kick drum at all. He didn't have a kick drum. He just had like the snare, uh, two or three toms, like rack toms. And uh, he had a few cymbals. I think they were like like acoustic or like real cymbals as opposed to electronic cymbals. But uh, yeah, the fucking, the light show. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> they had more rigs for lights on stage than actual uh instruments i remember I, I didn't count exactly but it seemed like probably six or or nine like stacks of lights that would just go crazy at, at parts of the show um it was it was really well uh paced there were of course mainly like you know the dance what have you but they uh, they changed it up a bit with like really uh, mellow uh, synthy like warm synth interludes and so it wasn't it was it was dynamic it was it wasn't all the same it wasn't it wasn't just the doo, 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 doo. and and that that's important to give it the light and shade to make the light lighter and the shade shadier <laughs> um. The opening act was uh, a dude who goes by the name of Ivarden Sphere, and I think they were a two piece before, and now they're just just a, like a solo act, kind of like uh, Nine Inch Nails. But Nine Inch, where we're at, Nine Inch Nails is like, uh, of course, it's Trent Reznor's project, like it's his baby, and he's like the the dictator or whatever in that band. Uh, Ivarden Sphere is like. A solo project, but it's just under the name Ivarden Sphere, and that it's more like a, a DJ based, which is kind of this, I guess, to my untrained EDM ear, kind of the same sound as uh, VNV Nation, but just played on like a, a, a DJ deck or whatever. Um, it was at here in Winnipeg, Manitoba, at a venue called the Park Theater. I've been there a few times before. Uh, I've heard people say that 
they were expecting, or they're surprised that VNV Nation plays such a small venue. But I thought it was fine. Like I was, I was, like I said, I was. Uh, this is this wasn't like my first choice to go to, because like I said, I'm. It's not like my. I don't listen to a lot of EDM or synth pop or whatever you want to call it. So I wasn't expecting much and I was, I came right from work. Like the record store closes at eight and I fucking booked it out of there, made it to the venue at eight thirty. Saw saw the owner as soon as I walked in, give him a, give him a greeting. <laughs> uh, so I was, I was kind of, I wanted to like stand kind of in the back and just watch because I didn't, I guess, feel comfortable there at first because like I said, I don't, I go to mostly like metal shows and stuff like that, but, uh, I saw other friends there. I saw another girl that works at the, at the record store. She was there. So we all said, hi, we all gathered around and then they were like right at the front of the stage. So I just fucking said, why not join them? So I was like, for the most of the show, I was right front center front row like right in front and it was great i was like <laughs> looking up at the singer i could see up his nostril and everything um I, I can't say i'm familiar with any of the songs because i never really listened to them before but that's going to change because uh the the tour that they're on incidentally is uh i think it's called the automatic says on the t-shirt yeah i bought a cd uh vnv nation automatic it's got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven songs seems like it's got the songs on air space and time resolution control goodbye 20th century streamline gratitude nova photon and radio and then about this t-shirt here That's the front, at the VNV Nation there. Yeah, it's the Automatic Empire Tour, where I guess they played the albums Automatic and Empire uh, all the way through. Not, I don't know if they played it like in sequence, but I'm pretty sure they played all the songs from both albums. And here's the back. And you can see the, the, see the tour dates there. So apparently we're the, uh, the second stop of the tour because the first stop was Minneapolis on August 8th and Winnipeg is the second stop August 9th and then they're on to Edmonton the day after tomorrow and then the last stop would be Madison Wisconsin October 15th wow so that's a that's like a two month long tour that's impressive unless they're taking a break sometime in there that I can't see oh yeah here they are they're taking like a three week break uh, beginning of September cool cool so, uh, I definitely want to keep listening to VNV Nation, and I want to kind of discover other bands in this genre, because I play keyboards in a band called Cerulean Skies, and we're more like prog rock, you could say. And I just want to like broaden my musical horizons and listen to as much as I can and I'm really glad I went to the show because I've, I've, it, I, I don't know if it was a religious experience, but it felt close to it. Like I felt like I was going to cry a few, a few times because, uh, the singer's lyrics were so like positive and life affirming and just like, it was so great to like, to, to hear that and see that because a lot of metal shows are like gloom and doom and fucking shit like that. And not that like the crowds at both shows are, are pretty much friendly. But I'd say that the crowds at this Vietnamese Nation show are friendlier, I guess, because they're not like mean, tough metal dudes or whatever. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, if any, if anybody has any, uh, recommendations, of what I could listen to next or like other albums by by VNV Nation or by uh, Ivor and Sphere that I could listen to please please comment 
another thing about Ivarden Sphere, uh, I think back when they were a two piece, they played the record store that I work at now. Like, I didn't work there back then. I think this was back in like probably seven years ago, I want to say, roughly. Give or take a few years. <laughs> but uh, they played the record store that I work at. And uh, I guess that's pretty cool. <laughs> so, uh, the only thing that I didn't like about the show was the front man for VNV Nation. He kind of seemed annoyed at times. Like, I don't know if it was technical problems or uh, issues with the crowd or something, but he just, he like shook his head a few times and uh, I could see him talk to like the techs on, on the side of the stage behind the curtains uh, concerning any issues, whether it be technical or with the crowd or whatever. But he, he, uh, he did talk to the crowd quite a bit. He was a, he was a, a very charismatic frontman. I thought, reminded me of Ozzy in a way, like Ozzy Osbourne, uh, except this guy is bald and a little on the chunky side, but that doesn't matter because <laughs> he uh, very char very charismatic. Uh, he did this little like like weird shuffle thing on stage where he he shuffled backwards. A lot of times, and that just looked like it looked endearing to me. Like, and the smile on the guy's face was fucking genuine. Like, when when the crowd yelled and cheered, he genuine genuinely looked surprised and humbled and and glad that uh, that he was there. And then towards the end of the show, I think it was the last song or the second last song, he was doing that that backwards shuffle, and then he accidentally bumped into uh the keyboard on stage left <laughs> and then <laughs> he took his microphone and started like screaming in the keyboard or the synthesizer player's face like all in good in fun of course and and the keyboard player was having uh the time of his life too he was enjoying it but i thought that was like a nice little interaction between the front man and uh i guess he's a hired gun because he's not an official member on uh, on the Wikipedia, but I could be wrong. Like I said, I just uh, I've I've heard of these guys before, but I never really took the time to listen to them. And uh, maybe that's a lesson. There's a lot of good things to be found if you only take the time to find them. Thanks for watching, Nemo. Thank <laughs> you.